Luke chapter 6, verse 40, uh, New King James Version says this. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. All right. Um, kind of strange how this came about this morning. Of course, I was praying. I was asking the Lord, what is it that you're saying right now? And um, I had a thought. And then the thought was about training. And so once that thought came up and I had the thought about training and everything, I said, okay. And I went and I found the scripture. So let's look into it at the disciples' point, point of view right now. <laughs> Joseph Combe goes, I'm only distracted by my wife's beauty. Oh. <laughs> Good answer, Joseph Combe. Yeah, he's trying to get kudos before Mother's Day. Okay, disciple. What is a disciple? A learner, a pupil. Okay, verse 39 says that, can the blind lead the blind? Mm -hmm. A disciple is someone being trained by an individual. So, he then goes on and he says here, can the blind lead the blind? The meaning behind this is, are you following someone who is a novice and less learned than you? If that is the case, both of you will fail and fall into a ditch because mm -hmm. one has not been perfectly trained than the other. And you have two yes. people here on the same playing field trying to train one another in something that they don't understand. Because mm -hmm. I wrote this down. Your peers cannot disciple you. No, they cannot. And, and I, I don't understand this where so many people are trying to allow somebody on the same playing field to disciple them. Which means that neither one of you are going to go anywhere. That's so good. Someone who is trained in said way that mm -hmm. you want to achieve. Okay, let's put it this way. Let's say that somebody has a profession as a banker. You want to, you want to become a banker, so you want to be trained by a banker that is already... Above you. Above you and then successful. You're not going to go to a personal friend with no banking experience and ask them to train you to become a banker. So why would you go to a friend that is either less than or at the same measure of faith that you are and ask them to train you when you should be having someone that is above you to train you and raise you up? Yes. Because the scripture here says a disciple is not above his teacher. If you find yourself thinking, I know more than my teacher, then you are full of pride and self-security. Wow. You better humble yourself before the Lord humbles you. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's good. Um, and I'm going to slow down on some things here in a minute, but I want you to really see this. A disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. To be perfectly trained. Now, this is something that I had, I had a thought. And um, I'm going to talk about a friend of mine from Ohio. And Shelly, it's your husband, so you know it's him. Um, but we were talking about when he was in Special Forces and Delta Force and how he had to be trained by these elite warriors. Mm -hmm in order to understand how to do maneuvers with them. You can't step into an elite fighting force with just regular old basic training. That's right, you can't. You can't do that. You have to be that. specially trained. You have to be specialized. Mm -hmm. So you have to go into specialized training in order to maneuver with specialized individuals. Many people are saying, why am I not where they are when I've been saved as long as they've been saved. You've not been trained by the specialized individuals for the Lord to move you into a specialized assignment because if you tried to move in that assignment without the training, you're not gonna make it, period. Mm -hmm. You've got to be trained, okay? Yes. You and I cannot maneuver with the body if we are not perfectly trained. Now, I may have a teacher in the natural but do you have the Holy Spirit as your as your teacher? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you need both. Because yes. some people say, well, you don't need a teacher all you because you got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> True. But then, then the word says um, that um, we have not many fathers in the faith. Hello? Because we only need one. You don't need a lot of yeah. different people pouring into you. 
um, probably five, mm -hmm. the max. And the reason I say five is because we have a five-fold ministry that is there to pour into the body and raise them up. So I don't believe that we need to be trying to get more influences into our life because it brings confusion. So I, I, I stick with that number five because we have the five-fold ministry and I'm an apostle and a teacher and a pastor and evangelist and a prophet that speak into my life to train me up. Now, if I want to maneuver at a high elite level in the kingdom, I have to be trained by high elite individuals yes. so that I can be ready when I step into that form of warfare, that form of faith or whatever. So we have to be trained. Uh, here's what I was saying. Um, you have uh, many instructors in the faith, but you don't have many fathers. So yes. we may have instructors and we may have fathers, but understand this also, mm -hmm. the two have to be together. If your spiritual influence is not being led by the Holy Ghost, then why would you want to be led by that individual? So we need to make sure that I have this individual that is filled with the Holy Ghost that is pouring into me. And, and, and I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost in that individual and for that individual to speak into my life to help get me to that elite level. Well, I was always taught this in business that you never let someone teach you that you do not want to end up like. And I'm going to say something about that here in a second. That's mm -hmm. good. So what are we looking at in training? And I thought of this one second. A little bit of this cold air in because I was burning up. Okay. Well, you've got on hoodies and. Well, it's cold, but <laughs> now I'm hot. When I start preaching, I start getting hot and I need a little cool air. So. Bless it. Training. And I had this thought Have you ever been scared or afraid or had fear come on you in a certain situation and you're like, I wish that when these situations come up, I did not moved to, to fear, but I moved to faith. Yes. So you've got to have the right teachers and authorities in your life to teach you that when fear tries to come on, yes. you don't subside to the fear, but through training, you learn how to maneuver in faith. In, in the military, they taught us that when you had to become one with the warfare, does that make sense? What does it mean, one with the warfare? You would see guys that have been through certain situations that when bullets start flying and you hear stuff popping and breaking, they're calm, they're cool, and they know right what to do. The guys that don't are losing their minds, shaking their head, going, what do we do? Where do we go? Oh my gosh, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And now all of a sudden they're spinning because they have not been trained to dominate that fear with a perfectly trained muscle memory type individual. We know in the supernatural that if I'm going to destroy fear in my life, then faith has to rise up. Perfect training a limit tells fear, you're not ruling, faith has come. Amen. Perfect training says that when I'm weak, I've got one stronger, and the stronger comes yes. and destroys the weak. Perfect training says that when I think that I'm walking in poverty, I have one who has the riches and glory that come and do away. When I'm scared, I have the perfect training of confidence that comes and reduces this. When I'm, hello, feel like I may be failing, I've got the perfect one of standing that comes and says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up. So yes. perfect training teaches you how to walk in faith, strength, riches, confidence, and how to stand <sighs> when you're perfectly trained. Now, here's the key to training. And, and I take my military background because this is what has given me the effectiveness in my spiritual walk because when we were home or our on post, is what we called it, when we were at our post, all we did was train. All we did was train mm -hmm. for the battle. So your training is daily. Does it get repetitive? Yes, but it's mind-muscle connectivity because we're learning and learn. So when it does happen, it's a natural movement. 
-hmm. It's, we're here. It's natural. It's natural. It's natural. But if I haven't been training like this, when it happens, I'm like, what do I do? So in the spirit, when you're training in the word of God and you're praying and you're seeking the face of the Lord, when something happens and the enemy comes, you're like, well, I'm in training for this. So the key to training is to keep training? That's it. Well, the key, well, hold on. The key. Because you said that and then you never like quote. Well, the infinite. key to being a good disciple is perfect training and putting perfect training into action okay. whenever it happens. So you have to, what, the scripture said be perfectly trained and you will be like, the one that is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So watch this. Whoever is training you, that's who you're going to be like. That's good. So if you're being trained by a novice, you're going to continue to be a novice. If you're being trained by somebody that's at the same level of you, you're going to continue to stay at that same level and you're not going to rise above it. To be like your teacher, Jesus. Now I have a natural teacher, I have a spiritual father, and I want to be like him in the spirit, but I want to be more like Jesus, which is why we've been given the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit to teach us and to train us. So remember what I said, a natural individual and that has the Holy Ghost, the two put together is the perfect individual or the perfect person in order to train you and to get you to that place of spiritual eliteness. Now, and somebody said a while ago, we, we never arrive. You're right, we're always training. We're always training. We're always going back through it. Okay, I'm going to go back through this again. I read the word. Guess what? I'm going to go back through it. Mm -hmm. I pray. I'm going to go back through it. I declare. I'm going to go back through it. Because I'm training and I'm being trained. I just, I just love this this morning. A disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Who's your teacher? Who is the one that is teaching you? Mm -hmm. Can you look at them and say, okay, this is the individual that's, do I want to turn out like them? Wow. Davy and I years ago were in a church and I stopped and I asked the question. I said, if we didn't work here, would we attend this church? And both of us said, nope. I said, then if we don't leave, we're going to end up, to, we're going to be just like these people. And that is not who we mm -hmm. want to be. We don't want to be like them. Yeah. So I want to go get under somebody that I would rather be like. I would go get under somebody and submit and say, that's what I want to be like. That's what I want. And then you got to go ask them, hey, I'll, would you train me? Mm -hmm. Will you be my trainer? And if they say no, then you go pray and ask the Lord. How it happened for me, my trainer showed up because the Holy Ghost told him to come to me. And then they began to speak to me and I said, this is, God has sent this individual to me. Then we went to a church. And I said, this is the church I believe that I'm supposed to be at. And God put that pastor, Pastor Kevin Wallace, in my life as a trainer. Mm -hmm. So he is a part of the fivefold as well as I am, me and Davey. But he is still a trainer of me. Hello? In the pastoral side. Yes. Because I don't have that side of me. Mm -hmm. I have a trainer in the apostolic side which is training me in the apostolic side. I have a trainer in the pastoral side which is training me in the pastoral side. I'm an evangelist. Okay? Prophet. Training. Teacher. Training. You want to be perfectly trained? You got to find somebody that's walking in eliteness. Yes. And when you find that, you ask them, will you be an instructor in the faith with me? If they say no, they say no. But if you pray before you go, God will lead you to the right people. Now, while they're training you, don't get the hothead. Oh, well, I know that. Oh, I know that. I don't. I don't have to do that. Better watch it. It's so good. That's where the enemy attacks you. And if you can't be a good follower, you'll never be a good leader. I love that. You do a whole teaching on that. I love that. Amen. All right, this is our Friday p -wad. Praise God. How about that? Let's be perfectly trained so that we look more like Jesus.
perfectly trained in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So when we're, we're ready. Well, and I, and I love what you said about staying trained even when you're not per se at war. You have to. Because when that battle or that attack comes from the enemy, that situation, that circumstance, if you have not been trained, then you're not going to be ready. Well, think about this. You're not training in battle. You're fighting. Amen. So if you don't know how to fight according to the Come word of on. God, then guess what? You were never trained. You know, I was, I was talking to um, a prayer partner of mine the other day, and we were having an absolutely incredible day. And then we started talking. You know what? Just because it's incredible today does not mean that we let loose of our post or being a watchman or let loose of our guard. We stay fervent in our prayer. James says, the effective fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Meaning that you've got to keep your post at all times. You've got to be straight, strained, trained up at all times in the things of God. Because we don't know what is coming. You don't know what is coming, mm -hmm. and you need to be ready. But if you decide to take a lazy boy day, boom, mm -hmm. then you're not ready. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready. I love this, Chris. The elite of the elite, and let's look at the military. Real I love quick. this. The elite of the elite are ready at a phone call. Mm -hmm. They are. They don't have time. They're ready. To say, in season wait a minute. and out of season. They don't have time to say, wait a minute, we need to go train for this. We're not ready because we haven't been trained. No, 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 no. They're like, they pick up the phone. They say, pack your stuff. You're leaving now. They've already trained. That's where God wants you. God wants you to be so effective that whenever he calls, you're like, I'm there.